Hey guys, it's Alexander Williamson here with the secret history of living in your aquarium. So if you're anything like me, you've started an aquarium. I've started many aquariums. This is a little bit nicer of an aquarium than a lot of them that I've started. It's very high tech. It's high light, lots of lumens. It's CO2. I'm using lots of liquid ferts. And because of that, I am getting algae. Now, algae is a big problem in the tanks when you're starting. Today in this video, I am going to give you a metaphor for how algae and plants cycle up. You may know the nitrogen cycle, which makes it safe for your fish, the beneficial bacteria, but you may not know why all of a sudden, a month into having a beautiful tank, you're ready to put fish in, and all of a sudden, this happens. And you just start seeing tons of algae all over. Now this algae over here, this is called diatomaceous algae, or diatome algae. That's red and brown algae. This is literally grown over the last two days, and it's all over the glass. If you take a look at these rocks down here, they used to be blue, like a blue-gray that you can see under there, and they're growing it too. And this is something that comes on very quickly and very strong. You can see it going on here, it's going on all the way down into the sand bed slightly, and it's also going to be going on on the plants. If you look very carefully, the leaves of the plants, like this little guy down here, He's even got that yellow and brown all over him, and that hydrocotyl verticillata. So, why is this happening four weeks into having it in an aquarium? Well, it's because of the plant nitrogen cycle. It's because of all the nutrients, the vitamins, and the minerals that plants need. And on this board, I want to show you guys the three biggest components to what causes algae in your tanks, but what also gives you success with your plants in your tanks, and why they're battling at this point, and the things you can do to mitigate that. So, it's like a construction site. Let's take a look. Let's set this down, guys. So it's like a construction site. This is the best, uh, the best thing that I could come up with in my head, uh, because I'm not very clever. But it's, say you're building a, a house, and maybe next to the house a grain silo, it's a farmhouse. And when you're building that, you've got builders, you've got your construction materials, you've got the little guys moving the materials, you've got help that does that, you've got electricity slash the energy the men have, and with a plant, it's very similar, and same with algae. So you've got the light from the sun that causes photosynthesis. That's how plants get a lot of their nutrients, all of their sugars, and a lot of their energy. And then from carbon, they breathe in the air, because what we breathe air is not just oxygen. In fact, it's mostly not oxygen. It's a lot of nitrogen. It's a lot of carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, it's oxygen, it's all sorts of things. It's other gases as well, and it breathes in these two as well as it sucks up these two through its roots. Not so much carbon, more nitrogen, and nitrogen is created by ammonia. Now, when we're talking about plants, ammonia is actually a good thing. They like it. But what they like more is already broken down nitrites turning into nitrates. And if you remember all this from cycling your aquarium, fish cannot take just plain uh, nitrites and, or even too many nitrates, and they definitely can't handle ammonia or chlorine. They're fine with the carbon. They're fine with the light. Now, in the lesser category, other than those big three, are potassium, phosphates, manganese, and, and all the minerals. You know, there's all sorts of things like uh, sulfur and all sorts of iron and things like that that play roles and that differs in different plants and different algae or algae, depending on which side of the pond you're on. 
So I just wanted you to take a look at this and let me explain really quickly. So in this tank right now, we are using a highlight source. That's a high tech, it's a twin star light. I can link in the description um, which light that is. Now, I've moved plants from other tanks and you can see how pink and beautiful these plants already are looking, the new growth, because of that highlight. Now, the day the algae started to show up was also the day I put the CO2 in. And also, I have a good amount of flow in this aquarium, so everything's getting mixed up, including the CO2. You'll also notice that there's actually strings of kind of hair algae on the rocks and things. And it's safe for fish now, which is a good thing. Uh, you know, when you see algae, oftentimes it is a sign that if you were cycling a clean pure tank, that's usually a good sign that it's going to be safe for fish. But another thing we're noticing is up here we have some bubbles. And we even have a little bit of this uh, sheen up here, this kind of metallic gasoline sheen that forms, shimmer. Uh, and I know this light makes it a little bit, eat, like, a little bit more. It almost has that effect itself. But and that's part of why you're seeing it. But what that is, is that's protein. And that's excess protein. And in a saltwater tank, you'd have a protein skimmer getting rid of that uh, somewhere over here. Just sucking that off the top and then uh, getting rid of it. It's a foamy, frothy stuff. Now that protein is fixed uh, in plants by the nitrogen. So plants use proteins, sugars, fats, just things just like we do. Uh, just like all living organisms. And so the other place it can come from is stuff dying. So as you cycle your tank, you're going to have certain bacterias that try to establish themselves and they die. They fail. You're going to have, this is a really annoying uh, algae. It's a hair algae or a uh, stringy algae, whatever you want to call it, slime algae. Uh, it's not a cyanobacteria. Those usually grow down in here, and those are called blue or green uh, mold or algae. And then you've got this diatomaceous algae, which is a harder form of algae with a slimy layer on top. Now, when you've cycled a new tank, this is actually normal. When you do a high-tech tank like this, this kind of ADA or UNS, this aquascaping as they may call it in a lot of places, style tank with the CO2 and all the components and especially active substrates, you're going to get effects amplified. And if you have just, you know, your standard 20-gallon tank with uh, some gravel and some plants and a few fish once it's cycled up, you may not get this stage as hard. But if you're using active substrates, here I have... ADA Amazonia 2, which has ammonia, nitrogen, all the things, and minerals, all the things plants need. Plus, I have fluval stratum in here, another active compound. And then we have sand just around the edges because I was kind of masking off where I'm not going to be planting. On top of that, we also have iron. We have little fertilizers and things that we're using each day. And that's going to help give us all the beautiful colors that all those minerals that I don't have time to explain what they all do. And you probably don't care in this video what they all do. But you're getting those beautiful colors, that dense growth. And hopefully soon we'll start seeing carpeting. And then we can clean all this up, put new sand in. And the bottom line is to start fixing this process, you could wait like a month and it may clean itself up. But the first things I recommend you do is you get a scraper and you scrape your glass. You just get a razor blade or a scraping blade. You scrape that off your glass. You do a water change of say 50%. And you want to be doing that every three days, the first two weeks. And then you want to be doing it, you know, somewhere between 30 and 50% maybe every five days, the next two weeks after that, and then, you know, or twice a week, say that, and then you can taper it off to once every two weeks or whatever works out for you and your stock load in your aquarium. So let's go back to this little diagram here because I think it's pretty useful. So 
Why is the algae forming while the plants are doing well? So we don't really need to worry about the plants because like I just said, they're doing well. So they have the parts of the puzzle they need. The only problem is algae has all the parts of the puzzle it needs. And when you have a new tank, what we should be doing is we should take the light, the number one thing, that can limit algae. The CO2 or the carbon and the fertilizers, that can limit algae. Uh, and then also things like phosphates and nitrogen and, and all those nutrients that we're adding to the tank to keep the rhizome plants uh, feeding because plants, most of them get 80 to 90% of their nutrients through their roots. Now algae gets its nutrients in the water. So that excess energy and nutrients is coming up off of the active substrate, and that's why we're doing the water changes, to get rid of that. Now, it's already trying to colonize on these walls, and that's what we need to get rid of. It is competing with the good bacteria to eat and break down any extra proteins and things that are in this water. We haven't dialed in the level of fertilizers that we need or which ones we need for the plant load because we start off with the plants, and do yourself a favor. If you have active substrate, pack that thing full of plants. Even if you're not going to use them all, get pots and put plants in there that you can remove later, float plants, whatever it may be. Use them because all this off-gassing of these uh, ammonia, of this nitrogen, and also if you're running CO2, then you've got the CO2 also, is just adding fuel to that fire for, one, the plants, which that looks great, but then the algae. So how do we beat the algae? Well, algae can grow in ambient light. It doesn't need a ton of light. So all day long, even if you've turned your light to six hours, six intense hours of a high light, that's one really good way to do it. But if you have the tank open and it has daylight coming in the windows, uh, daylight coming in the windows and lights in the room, that's enough to grow algae. So you want to put up a blocker if you're really having problems and you've scrubbed this and done the water changes and that doesn't help, you can put up a blocker, a blanket, cardboard, whatever it may be, and you're going to put your light on about six hours. You can even go into five or four and a half, but let's just say six for now. And then when the light is not on, that algae is not growing if it's photosynthetic algae. Uh, especially the green algaes uh, and the lighter brown algaes, the yellow algaes, those won't be growing. They're photosynthetic. They use the sun also. But those plants, that's enough energy for them because they're feeding through their roots. Now, the water has so much nutrients in it that all your rhizome plants are going to be doing really well. So your Anubias, your Boos, all those kind of things are going to be doing really well. Your epiphytes, uh, your java ferns, things like that will do great. And another thing you can do is you can kind of ease off on some of these fertilizers, especially if this is your first rodeo with kind of a planted aquascape tank that's not just gravel and kind of, as we say, low-tech plants. Uh, you know, if you've got some delicate stem plants and you've got, you know, a whole array of plants... For me, I'm already wanting to bring out these colors, and I know how I'm going to battle this algae, and I'm not worried about it. But it can be really overwhelming, and right here is probably the most important thing I'm going to say this entire video. Do not go running to the bottle. Just like they say with life's problems, don't go running to the bottle and adding something like algae kill, algae fix, this or that. Uh, it's not going to help all the time. Now, there's a chance it may help, but oftentimes it masks the problem. Just like when you put dechlorinator in, it works for a couple days, uh, the fish are safe, and then you know what happens? There was no food for your, your beneficial bacteria, and all of a sudden there's a spike of ammonia when that stuff stops working, when the dechlorinator stops working, or if it breaks down and releases some, if it de uh, degrades, and then you're stuck with another spike, you add more of the stuff, and it becomes this big feedback loop, and pretty soon you're uncycling your tank. So I don't recommend that. Now what we can do, and it seems counterintuitive, is we can turn up the CO2. That allows the plants 
to use all of the materials at their expense much more efficiently. The light and the CO2 are what the plants need. The CO2 necessarily isn't what the algae needs. It likes phosphates and things like that. Why? Well, let's take a look at our little diagram. So here comes the school part. Uh, and if you just needed to hear those tips, maybe you can combat algae with that. If all else fails, let me give you the last tip here on, on algae on treating it. So you've got turning the light down a number of hours, but turning the power up, blocking off ambient light, and turning up the CO2 or putting more carbon in the filter. In this case, it's a canister filter uh, to feed those plants. You can also do root tabs and other things like that. So you're feeding the plants, not the water column. In my case, I am using specifically designed fertilizers that don't have nitrogen, nitrates, ammonia, anything like that. It's just pure iron, pure potassium, you know, things like that. And so I know what I'm adding in. And if you're at that stage, you probably don't need this video. But if you're not, don't worry about the water column right away. Uh, you can be using your CO2 or your carbon or your root tabs. As you get more advanced, then you can use the fertilizers as you learn to control uh, the algae without having to resort to a bottle. As I said, you add that bottle in and there's gonna be another bottle you need to add to correct. Or maybe there's a deficiency in iron because you added too much carbon or there's not enough of the, you know, there's all sorts of chain, uh, uh, chain uh, down, the, down the road effects, I guess would be the word. Um, so over here, that carbon, that's the same as CO2, that's the same as air, which is oxygen, nitrogen, CO2, as we said, that goes into the plant, and that is the building blocks. Carbon is the building blocks of your plant. Pretend this is a plant or a little cell of algae. Carbon is the building blocks, the wood, the, the frame, the metal joists, all that. And you need it to build. If you've got lots of sunlight but no carbon and nitrogen material, then you can't build anything. Now, nitrates and nitrogen, they're like your special blocks. They're like your unique tasks, your crown molding, your window sills, your curtains, all your interior design. They allow you to create proteins, which then allow the carbon to be bonded into place. And then it also helps with photosynthesis. And in the end, it's a big circle that also gets those plants healthy. Now, other things like uh, magnesium and potassium, those they, they help the workers control how much they can do with the CO2. So that potassium's kind of like your, your oversight foreman in the crane. He helps lift these building blocks. That's what the, the potassium does uh, in there. That's letter K on the alphabet uh, or on the, uh, the uh, element on the table of uh, elements. Now, atomic table of elements. All right. And then magnesium. So I like to say that it is kind of like the, the plug for using all the light. It's kind of the wires that run the equipment on the machinery. So it allows workers uh, to use the light in the form of chlorophyll. You can't have chlorophyll without magnesium. Now, there's also all sorts of other little, uh, you know, iron, gold, zinc, there, believe it or not, boron. I mean, there's all sorts of things that you wouldn't think of that have roles in this, you know, little things like maybe it's the, the air duct in the house and it helps it function. It, it spreads the oxygen in the plant uh, around. It allows osmosis or, you know, um, potassium also uh, in, in its salt ions help send signals between cells just like they do in our nerve cells all right now the light is definitely the workers and the machinery that's going to say how much can we do we've got all these builders here we've got the carbon that's the energy that's what the plants breathe in co2 and then they put it out as air which is awesome for us uh, but they steal that carbon off the oxygen Nitrogen, same thing. There's a bunch of nitrogen in our air that we breathe. Air is not oxygen, remember. 
And so they use that nitrogen to make chlorophyll. These other things make the chlorophyll work. And so it's like a work team all working together. Now, the last one that I want to describe is phosphates. They are what causes the metabolism and speed of how quickly all this is going. So I did that as a little worker yelling payday. If you want to look at this, take a still shot of it or whatever. I know it's kind of chicken scratch writing, but you know, hopefully you can figure that out. Um, but it's like the guy, the foreman yelling payday, uh, you know, work your hardest. This is how quickly we can do things in the plant. It allows things like flowering to happen. Uh, you're going to have all your basics covered and your minerals needed. You're going to need your iron. And if you want reds to come out, then maybe you want to lower your nitrates and up your iron. Maybe you want to add CO2, but back off on other things. But when we're talking about algae, the phosphates are like that paycheck thing. And so a lot of fertilizers that people use... I love Easy Green once a tank is established, but things like Easy Green or Flourish, other things like that, they have nitrates or nitrogen and they have phosphates, which are they tell the plants to grow quickly. They let them photosynthesize. But if they don't have that CO2 ready at hand to grow that fast, or if they just don't grow that fast biologically, there's only so much they can do. You know, workers can only work so much in a day. They, the foreman can't yell overtime. However, with the algae, it can. And so by those things I suggested, that's like taking away the payday from the algae. The plants, they're tougher. They're going to withstand it. They're multicellular. They've got all these other things they need. And so they can still do it. They may not flower. They may not look a beautiful red. But to get rid of the algae... They can even forego light. They can eat and get carbon from their roots. They can get nitrogen, minerals, other things, uh, potassium, phosphates, all that, uh, and they can store it. They're a more complex organism in that sense. So what we're doing is we're undercutting everything else at the site. We're limiting that light. We're actually having to get dirty because we're workers too, and we're going to get rid of this algae. And after that spike is done, after all this stuff leaches out, then it'll calm down. You'll see the algae stopping. You can slow down on your on your water changes. I mean, you might need to do 50% every two days if you've got algae this bad coming back right after you clean it each day. But the more uh, active substrate you have, the more that's going to happen. However, two years from now or six months from now, whatever it may be, you're going to have far better, far healthier plants that look good. See this new crypt that's growing out? It's already bright pink, a pink flamingo. The leaves came this color. So you can already see the effects on the plants of this new tank. You can see all the little pinks and reds appearing at the top or new shoots in the case of the sword plants and things like that. Uh, and that is a testament to what CO2 can do and what light and all the right fertilizers can do. Right now we're not dialed in and the soil is giving off too much of what the plants need. And so the algae is stepping in and saying, I'll take care of that. So we can also add things like algae eaters. We can also add uh, other things like that kill algae in the water. But I don't think you should do that. That's like going to the bottle uh, when you add something like a UV filter because that's going to kill all the good things, all the bad things, all the little plankton and little you know yummies that fish like or shrimp like. And really it's killing the bacteria that is going to have to fight one another for who gets dominance. In the end, your plants are going to win out. You're curating. You're giving them the edge. So I hope this information helps you kind of visualize what elements do what in the plant and how it helps build um, the plant and the algae. Algae works very similar this way, but think of algae as a little hut and this as a big old mansion or maybe a freaking skyscraper when it's in a plant. You can, you can put a skyscraper in a windstorm, the little hut's gonna go away. In a flood, maybe the bottom, maybe the leaves will yellow a little bit, but it's gonna survive. So if these little uh, metaphors and what I'm talking about 
has helped you at all, please click that like button. If you stuck around this long, I mean, come on, if you're not subscribed, you gotta subscribe, please. And uh, if you want to support me and uh, this battle, uh, as well as getting my schools of fish, and you know what I should do, other than pass by my wife, sorry wife, show you that, yes, I know how to grow a green aquarium, if you didn't believe me or haven't seen my other videos. This is part of the growing pains, it's all natural, uh, and don't worry, algae will pass. Don't make it worse by adding a bunch of random things. So... We're going to control those elemental things, and you're going to be fine. But, like I said, if you want to support what I'm doing here, where this is going, when this grows in, when it's all lush, we add the sand back in, and it's beautiful, and it looks like one of those Japanese pictures on Instagram, please uh, check out my Patreon or check out my merchandise. I've got beautifully illustrated, accurate illustrations of fish like Corydora, shrimp, uh, goldfish, all sorts of stuff on there. You can check me out on Instagram. And then on Facebook, we actually have a group where we help each other uh, and share our, our pictures of what people are doing. Everyone from beginners to experts are on there, and it's a very, very friendly channel. So please feel free to join in on the conversation or check out the live streams, throw a super chat. It all goes back to this channel to get equipment. So we started the channel with low-tech shrimp and small tanks and here we are today with the beautiful ADA UNS uh, combo tank and the twin star light. And remember, if you want any of the equipment you see here, the plants, the fish, got links with discounts in the info below. Thank you so much for watching you guys and I will talk to you next time. Take care of your critters the people around you, and yourself so you can do those first two, and we're going to have a great day. Swim on, guys. Bye.